Born and raised in Dera village, Siaya County, Kenya, Dr. H.P. Dauda, who recalls his journey of humble beginnings, narrates of his life as a child and the struggles with education due to financial constraints. See, I've grown in a village. I'm born in Siaya, uh, Siaya district. At that time, it was a Siaya in 1950. So it was a small village called Ndere. And it was very old cotton ginery there in the, in the small village where about t 10 or 12 Indian families were there, some trading and some in working in the ginery. That is where I was born. And we had a very mm, different background, which uh, like it was uh, difficult even to, with a little money to survive for school fees. So uh, it was a... Uh, difficult for me because we had a class five in village. So then we had to go to the secondary school in Kisumu. So I tried to have to go in boarding, but it was difficult to get sometimes a fee for boarding. My father was working in the shop with some salary of three to five, I have 300 shilling at that time. So I decided, let me try. So I was staying in one of my relative place for one, one year. So after standard six, then I could not, I tried to complete seven, but it was difficult because to about the, uh, all the finance problem and to get boarding. The difficult situation obliged Dauda to drop out of school and as a result, he decided to venture into business as a confectionery hawker. So then I said what to do. So I was trying to help one shopkeeper and learn what they're doing. Finally, I said, like, why don't I start mine? Because I found uh, local, um, our colleagues, uh, Jalwo, Kijana, on my age. They were selling things, buying from here and selling on the street. So I said, let me also start selling and join them. So I joined them to sell the sweets at the market, near the petrol station, near the bus, whenever it is there. So then the sweets, every day now, for, to start sweets was four shillings, three shillings, eighty cents, I didn't have. In 1963, the Kenyan Independence Day, he says, was a big break for him. In 1963, that's why I never forget our independent day. That was a great day, a great time. Not only that day, the whole that week of 1963 were independent. So what I decided that there's a badge, at that time people wanted that badge and flag of independent. So near that petrol station, I was selling the flag, putting on the windscreen, and the badges, because a lot of people coming for Christmas time. So that is where selling that, sticking that badge, I made 520 shillings. And because these Indians were, uh, wholesalers were afraid, they left that town, they went to Kisum, because people were worried, you know. But I was lucky because no shops were opening, so I got a chance. Instead of 10 shillings for one flag, I put in the windscreen, and people pay me 50 shillings. He later on joined hands with his dad, where he was offered a job worth 150 Kenyan shillings per month. Dauda saved some of it and later on used it to acquire a pickup truck that helped him in his business. Uh, my father convinced me and to join where he was working, they needed manpower. So I joined to work there. And I was being trained now to all this kind of work, in the store, in the shop, staking, doing that. So I got 150 shilling salary. So I sold my things, to they bought my things. I put first my account in Barclays and put 512 shillings in my Barclays. And because that I didn't know very much to write, so I told them, let me have this open for me in 19, that was 1969, no, that was 1964, 65, that's. So then I got a job. In Job now, I learn a lot of sales because I used to go with my salesman as a driver and I was going with him is to help him. So I learned how to do the marketing. So there where it helped me because in root sales and everywhere in the pickup so with my this boss. I mean, uh, was a driver, but he was a man and I was going to also convince customers. So in 1969, somewhere in April, uh, I left the job and I said, let me start my own. Now, because I know the customers and I will make more money. And that is where I was blessed by my people our local, uh, my old, I would say we were all citizens, I'm born and brought up there. So all my brothers of Luos and having shops, 
Perfect. So I, they trusted me. I said, now I'm starting my own. I had some small, uh, they had some small pickup, which was not well doing. It was to repair it. I took it against my some salary. And I started selling on this, uh, supplying to the shop. When his business began picking on well, Dauda took up the responsibility of educating his siblings. So I go Kisumu, I buy goods, I go Yala, I, I bring jaggery. So I started making at least daily more than 200 actually. 150, 200. I'm a ton boy, I'm a driver. So I can make at least sometimes 100, sometimes 200. So in one month I can make four to 5,000 actually. So that makes me, after four or five months, I bought another big now because the orders were made up to Assembo, Bondo, all that up to Holsea money, up to Busia border, on this side up to Assembo and all that area, because that was a CI district. So I, I was work, working and going there. So that made me now to have that yes, and I told my parents and my father always, they were worried. I said we were 11 of, uh, in our family, brothers and sisters. So I said I will be, make sure that they all go to the, finish their education. And with the blessings of my parents, and people around me, uh, I, I was succeeded. He also took over a retail shop from an Indian owner who had put it up for sale in their village. There was an exodus of Indians, some going to UK. They got to visit. So I was left there and some Indian was trying to sell his shop, which I took over. That is where now I become a businessman fully with my own shop in the name of H.P. Dauda. So that is where my journey started beginning very well in 1969, you know. So from there now I had a good chance to supply more goods, having the shop so customers, suppliers trusted me from Kisumu, giving me a little credit. And uh, that is how life started very well. In 1974, he built a holo factory, a Jagri molasses factory that runs to date in partnership with his friend Albert. 1974, 75, because I was selling a lot of Sukari Guru, you know Jagri, and it was coming from Yala and Butere and Mumia. So I said, let me put a Jagri factory with one of my partner called Albert Namtendawere, he's a Luo friend. So he's old, he was a quite uh, engineer somewhere. So I said, this is your land in Ugunja, in Rangala. So he be, we became 50 50 percent partner. He contributed land. And I didn't have little money, so one of the chief gave me a little loan, Chief Amop, and I had only 5,000, and we started a small-scale industry. That is now industrial base started. Due to the good virtues taught by his parents and his experience with the pains of poverty, Daudo chose to convert his servants' quarters within Uholo factory into a children's home and a charity center, which is currently run by the Kenyan government. From my jaggery, it is still there, and the jaggery name was Uholo Jaggery Factory. And still, if you go Rangala, towards Busia, there is a structure there on the river. And the right hand side was my servant quarters people, which we converted it to the mental handicapped disabled home when I shifted to Kis Kisumu. That story will come later on. But here, that place I'm using for charity. I gave now government also is running. Partly I had another five acres extra for farming. So recently I gave to them that to this, uh, we started with 22 children, now they're about 150. And now it's managed by government, but you know, ne? by money shortage. So my brother called Yogesh in Kisumu, he's managing as a trustee. So when there's a shortfall, we chip in, we want to see that is going on. So that is my charity thing started from that time. In 1986, after moving to Nairobi, he established Jumbo Biscuits Limited, a confectionery maker under the House of Dauda group of companies. In 1986, I shifted to Nairobi, and my brothers were managing all other business in Kisumu. And I shifted, though it's a family business, I stayed in Nairobi, and I started a biscuit factory, and I named it Jumbo Biscuit. In the mid-1990s, he moved to Uganda, where his son was, and started Britannia Allied Industries Limited. He has since established other companies in both Kenya and Uganda. We had opportunity in Uganda. So my son uh, came from when he was in London. We decided, my brother, to call him and we do something, supplying. we were supplying goods in Uganda. So we started, my son went there, called Vinay, 
and we started even business there and we did also biscuit factory there called Britannia. So we are now two places and we started fruit juice and uh, uh, splash and fruit processing plant in Uganda. And here, later on, I got the opportunity. <coughs> there was a salt factory in Malindi, which was in a problem with the finance, the bank. So also I bought that company with some fr share partners and then I own it 100% slowly, slowly we agreed because it was in Gongoni near Malindi, called Mombasa Salt. Original was Fundisa Salt, but I changed it to Mombasa. So that was my industrial bad side. And uh, at that time, uh, I was doing well and we started Uganda. And uh, then I also shifted to help my son in Uganda for eight, seven, five to seven to eight, seven years, six to seven. Dauda, together with his partners, later on revived House of Manji that was then under receivership. Manji Biscuit was in receivership while this government was changing when Moy, ex-late president, was there in that first election, another. So that were in receiver, so I decided, no, I will, I will buy that. <coughs> so also I had some partners and we bought that, uh, this Manji Biscuit, which is now there. So we call it now Manji Foods. But... Uh, People know as a house of Manji, and my company all is under house of Dauda because my main uh, name of my group of companies is called Dauda Group of Company, House of Dauda. He shifted back to Kenya after buying Manji biscuits and made charity his core objective. And I shifted back to Nairobi after buying this factory, and now from that time also charity was the main aim to help the people. So I was been working with some orphan children home, all people home to give them biscuits, some support. And uh, that is how it uh, went on and on. So again, election riots again last time. So we started a project with our organization called Brahma Kumaris and uh, with Emmy and the slum people, Post for Peace. The now retired Dr. Dauda, who saw the reality on ground, especially in slum areas, chose to come up with a sustainable plan to help out those in need with the help of Amy and other partners. I found the problem in Kibera on the ground, even Madare, Korokocho, <coughs> and now I knew a lot of good people. There are many NGOs, but I found the real work on the ground was not really <coughs> sustainable. <coughs> Maybe some money was coming, but sustainability. So me as a successful businessman, now, now like today, I'm about 70, say so 70 now. But I always say, I let me be remain at 50 so I can work still hard. So I decided why giving them all the time because I was giving some scholarship, school fees. But then I said my heart also in Uganda was agriculture. As I was there, even I was appointed as a task force committee, chairman for agriculture for five years, task force committee. So I learned agriculture also, that food is important. And after that, without food, you cannot blame people because the hungry man, even in Bible they said the hungry man is an angry man. Then we discussed with, uh, recently with Emmy after I got retired and Ben Oko and she introduced me to a lot of another good, honest, you know, to get honest volunteer also is very difficult. Uh, because what people get on the ground is very peanut. And we like donors to bring and then we get 20% only to the ground, rest goes to ABCD. Yes. We are piloting everything on this farm. <laughs> So it's a learning center as you you continue seeing because it's a two year old farm right now when we started with the first the greenhouse and then the outside space. Mm -hmm. So every space here, Papa is making sure that it's a learning space. So we've discovered that we not just need trees, we also need fruit trees. The project kick started at his Lovington home and plans to expand to other areas. Dauda says they strive for long-lasting impact, and their main approach is agribusiness, where they use technology and modern methods such as hydroponics, pyramid farming, and step farming. I told them, if you work under one umbrella, we will support you as a children park, everything. They did little, little things, was doing, but I said, now everybody comes and give you 10,000, 20,000 and go away. Take videos, photos, but on the ground. Then what next? Let us start agriculture. I told him this place is open and Amy also liked agriculture, so we started this what you see in my Levington home, the greenhouse and everything. I said, what is sustainable? Can we do agriculture? Yes, Papa will support you. 
So this was a dream. Together here, and I said, okay, let's try and train people also. We get some money for charity. And that is how the seeds of real agriculture training program here in, you know, this Levington, in this area. Then again, we got an idea to go more in agriculture. In Korokocho, we have done very well. Still, we are doing, covering, recovering the so uh, land and putting in sack garden, different, different way. And we want to see that every youth, because in average, I, she told me, and we interview many people, that hardly they earn 500 or 1,000 cents per week. We take a walk around the garden, and evidently, the crops planted are vast. This great initiative has earned a living for the youth involved. The humble business tycoon has other projects in store channeled towards the betterment of the lives of the youth, children and women, namely. We started there to learning and all the money which comes, I don't want a penny, <clears throat> even here. I'm not looking for making profit, zero profit. I started my foundation, HP eh, Dauda Foundation, so everything should go for, not free handout, for development for the people. In Kebera, shoe making, stitching, young single mothers, <clears throat> all that we do in Ondugu, also in there with them. So we try to learn from people what is going wrong. First we said, how can we unite the NGOs who are really ready to work together? And let's not duplicate. Let's everybody use their ideas and we be one team under one umbrella. But it was very difficult. We tried and tried. I said, everybody, we, let's come together and make one umbrella so the youth can get a job. In the women's, the single mothers, they are doing welding, they are making a lot of things. So we bring them under vocational training. I will finance for material and uh, equipments and they will pay back. It should be like a lot. That after that they have to get their own market. Not going to look for the job. So this is planned. Still we have not given up. But because of this little COVID disturbance. But COVID was again a blessing. <coughs> People will say, Dauda, what are you telling? I say yes. Because uh, since two years I was telling people. This smelling, this mataros, a lot of bacteria, malaria. Uh, always we try to clean, 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 but still people attitude throw there again. So I said this cleaning, cleaning process, how long it will go? So how can we aware, bring awareness? So through agriculture and then youth, I can pay them and we want to bring some long-term solution, even for clean and hygiene. That was my main thing. Agroforestry, he says, is his main dream for the next 10 years. I have planted a lot of trees, but now I say, no, trees also we are starting cutting, cutting. And sometimes we are doing for name and fame and we are doing little. The environment was totally disturbed with the pollution. So we said now, let's start fruit trees. I told her, blind, we are buying more plants, seedlings for fruit. So all the river side, five, five meters put any kind of fruits, avocado, moringa, mango, whatever possible. So we are already starting to put more fruit trees, long trap, so let even people will eat. So the agroforestry, is my dream for another 10 years, that agroforestry means everything in agriculture, which will help a food security. Main thing of health, which is wealth, is food, clean. Dauda has quite a strong stand about industrialization. 10 years back, I wrote a lot of things about industrialization. I was writing always something, not in the newspaper, but telling people, let us be, not be a supermarket consumer for the outside from China or South or where or India. We should produce our own, everything. We have enough manpower, learned manpower. So this country, to come out of this uh, kind of difficult time, to depend on donor of this COVID or all that, thing, we, could have, we can do everything, export. Food item at least if you don't export. I mean, if you don't import. But we should have a food processing plant. We should have agro plant and add value to our agriculture. And the last, why this COVID is disturbing in the main city? Because we are congested in the city. Too much congestion. 
So it needs industries some into the rural areas, in to the, every district, you know, and, and employ people in agriculture industries. Employment is the main issue and food security, like fish. Now we are importing, while we have a lot of sweet waters and all that, but planning. What is his opinion about the COVID-19 pandemic? This COVID is a, some difficulty until we don't get the medicines for it, isn't it? So I think that you young people, particularly, you people should be more responsible. I say our president many times tells that people have to take their own cross, you know, if they do wrong. Now time has come. If they don't take all their uh, cross here, these people, then Corona is going to take a course. Almighty brings climate change, bring floods, bring all these natural calamities. Is indirectly is a curse to the from the universal. Am I wrong? These diseases, these floods, this rain and unclimbed climate change, because we are greedy to cut, cutting, cutting trees, forest, forest destroy, and not planting more food. We are imbalanced. United we stand, divided we fall, is the slogan that Dr. Dauda parts with. This is a, a war, not for government only. Government alone can't do it. It needs a positive attitude. It needs people to say enough is enough. Let's compromise and sacrifice at least for five to six months. Even everybody start giving 10% of their saving profit back, not even 50%. I think we can really uh, remove, uh, get out of this poverty. 10% make God Almighty your partner, either in your salary, either in industries. You can give more, but minimum people should say, yes, I will commit 10%. And God says, you reap what you sow. So today we are reaping what we have planted. Uh, am I wrong? Uh, because we forgot to help our neighbors, each other.